Hello everyone, Leaf here. Today, we've got a little bit of a repair project to get through. So, if any of you have kids, you know, you get, or sometimes you buy toys brand new, sometimes you buy toys from different groups on Facebook or off Craigslist or Kijiji, depending on where you are. And, for example, you get a toy full of water. So, sometimes, when the water is supposed to be up at the top, you get it and it's uh, drained down a little bit. Now, it's not that uncommon to happen. Today, we're going to see if we can fix the lack of water problem. Now, this isn't exactly a toy. It's a music box you put on the side of a crib. We've had this one since our son was born, so we've had it for eight years now. And over the years, the water level has slowly started to drop. And now with the, the new baby, we'd like to have it for him too, but there's really no liquid for the bubbles to, for any bubbles to start forming. So I've been tasked and I'm going to be able to do this. We're going to sit down today and we're going to fix this. Now it's actually really simple. You only need a couple of things you need distilled water and baby oil. Those are the only two things you need to refill the water in this. Now from what I've been able to find out, the liquid inside this is actually just a simple combination of nine parts distilled water or nine parts water to one part baby oil. Now the reason I'm using distilled water instead of bottled water or tap water is because distilled water is perfectly pure. There's nothing else in it. So the odds of it going slimy, gross, are greatly reduced. The baby oil is going to help make it even more stable, so you're not going to end up with that growth. And it's also going to make the bubbles look a heck of a lot nicer. So, step one, we've got to do a little bit of mixing and measuring. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is measure out the water. So I'm going to start off by measuring out nine tablespoons of water. Why nine tablespoons? Well, it's a nine to one mixture of water to baby oil. So by starting off with the water, it's gonna give me a much more accurate way to measure. And I'm also it's also gonna give me the chance to come up with just sort of a, an arbitrary amount to start with. I don't know exactly how much water I'm gonna need to fill this up. It's a fairly narrow space in between. So hopefully this is going to be all, all that's needed. So start off with the water, pour it into a container. Next, we need the baby oil. Now the baby oil comes with a safety cap, so apparently it may be child safe. It's not adult safe, but I will say, if you heard the clicking a second ago, that was actually pretty touch and go. So one tablespoon of baby oil. Down she goes. And the next step is going to be trying to stir it up a little bit now. You know, oil and water don't mix particularly well, so I'm not exactly sure how this works, but we're going to find out. Now the first thing you want to do before you start taking out any electronics, taking them apart, is to remove the batteries. So we'll start off here by opening up the battery cover, see if we have anything inside. As you can see there's nothing, so we're good to go ahead and start taking out the remaining screws. Now, all these screws are set in plastic, so you do want to be careful as you're taking them out. Now not including the two for the battery, to open the shell of the aquarium, we're looking at ten screws. We have two on the top, two on the bottom, and three on either side. Now once all the screws are out, you can give the back a little lift and twist her out of the way. Now everything we need to work look at here is just with the air tubes. So you have three tubes total. You have one across the top and then you have two going down either side to the bottom. Now, the tube on the top is the air inlet, where it sucks the air from the top of the aquarium and blows it down to the bottom. Now, for the purposes of this repair, the only thing we really need to do is disconnect the air inlet hose from the top of the tank. 
Now this is going to be a little bit tricky because they really did not intend for these hoses to come off after they put them on. When they originally put them on, there was a little bit of hot glue applied to the ends of the connectors to make sure that there was a good seal and that they would not be able to come off after the fact. So to get them off, you're going to need to use a little screwdriver or something to gently work the glue loose. And slowly work your way around, trying to, or making sure you take care not to catch or the rubber tube. You don't want to break that because if you break that, you may not have enough length if you cut it shorter to reconnect it afterwards. Now once you've got the rubber hose separated from the connector, you may find that you have a little bit of glue remaining connecting the two, and that's just easy enough to fix with a knife, either a Zacto knife or a pocket knife, some sharp little object to separate the two. Once you've got all the little connectors done, the hose should come free, no problem. The next step is to put batteries back in the, the aquarium. We know we're not going to be shorting anything out and we're not going to accidentally break any wires in this process because we've already taken it apart and we've taken care because for the refill process we actually need the pump and that's how that's why we needed to undo the inlet side now it's a water the system pumps air however it is there is liquid included in the system so you do need to have a waterproof pump so there's no concern about using the pump for what we're going to do. Now, as you can see, with the battery's in, turn it on, push the button, we've got the lights on, everything's moving, and you have some bubbles. So now, here's where we need the air inlet. So we've taken our solution, we've got it off to the side, turn the light on, and now it's just a matter of putting the tube into the solution to be sucked up. Now as you're filling this up, you don't want to fill it too close to the top. Remember, there's going to be some liquid still on the lines rather than air. So once you get close to the surface, you can stop, pull the air line out, let it suck up some air, bleed itself out, turn it off, and you're good to start reconnecting everything once again. Now since the hose was originally connected with some hot glue to prevent any leaks, we're going to do the same thing. So you need a hot glue gun to seal everything up. So first thing you need to do is you need to make sure the connection is dry both on the hose and on the connector. If you have any liquid still on those two places of contact the hot glue will not stick. Once you've got it all wiped off you can go ahead and put the hose back on the connector. And then you can go ahead and add a little drop of hot glue making sure that it's worked around as much of the section as you can to make sure you've got a good contact to avoid any leaks. Now we're ready for reassembly. So with this one, the first thing you need to do is make sure the infrared sensor is back in place and pointed the right direction. Then it's just a matter of turning the lid around, lining up all the slots, make sure that your toggle switches are lined up with the plastic caps that come through the back. Then it's just set her back down, give it a nice little press to make sure it clips in place. And once you get that solid click, then you're good to start putting the screws back in. Now for setting these screws, you want to make sure that you turn them backwards a little bit until you hear a nice settling click as they set seat themselves. Because you're putting them back into plastic, if you start to screw them in and they're not the right alignment, you're just going to rip all the plastic apart, strip the holes, and then they won't seat. Once all the screws are in, go ahead, put the battery cover back on, tighten up those two screws. And Bob's your uncle, it's all done. And there you go. So if you have a child's toy or a, could be an adult toy, I'm not 
can't think of any off the top of my head, but if you have anything that is full of a liquid that's supposed to be in a sealed, or that's supposed to be sealed, that's evaporated, leaked out, that's how you fix it. If it's got a motor, all you have to do is disconnect the input side or the input hose, put that into your container full of liquid, use the power and the motor to suck the fluid up, put it through the system, it'll get rid of any air bubbles. For the most part, these systems where there's going to be air circulating through a liquid, the pumps are in fact waterproof. If they weren't, they wouldn't be able to use them in the system because if you turn it upside down, they start sucking the fluid up and if it wasn't waterproof, you'd ruin the pump. So it is safe to do. Now, if you have an object that doesn't have a pump, say one of the old liquid filled games or even a, like a collectible you get when you go to different theme parks. I know years ago when I went to one of their theme park down, I believe it was Disney World, I picked up this little surfer guy that was in a fluid and it was a combination of oil and water, uh, oil on top, water on the bottom. Well, the liquid all had worked its way out. Now, if you want to refill something like that, simply a matter of turning it over, removing the plug, and filling the liquid using a syringe back up to the level you want it. Then, put the plug back in, make sure it's sealed, clean it all up, flip it over, and you're good to go. And literally, it's just that easy. Now, and if it's a child's toy, and then you need to put oil in it, Always use baby oil. Baby oil is going to be safe against the, the child's skin. If you're using paraffin oil or even cooking oil, you really don't want to use because the cooking oil is vegetable based and it will go bad. Paraffin oil, it's not good to have on your skin for long periods of time, especially for children. Baby oil is safe and if they do happen to touch it on their hands or put their hands on their mouth, it will be safe. And Using distilled water, you want to use distilled water over tap water, bottled water, because all the impurities are taken out. It's a neutral water and nothing will grow. So, hope that helped. If you have any questions about what you saw, send me a note in the comments. If you like what you saw, give the video a thumbs up and we'll see you again.